are involved. But as we said, just a, a, a precautionary measure. And um, as the JSA, making sure everything is brilliant. Righto, now we are. Thank you very much, uh, Abby. We're back in the Group B, the Biolytics Group B, top eight. And we're looking at Greg Reardon and uh, Dawn Herb out there. They had a time of 57.95 to find themselves in this top eight competition in these uh, 400 boats. It's uh, nice to see them out here, ladies and gentlemen, newcomers to the sport, and uh, they found themselves in the top eight in their first ever racing career. And doing a fantastic job. You've really got to be happy with the way they've been uh, acquitting themselves all day. And uh, they, you know, the first qualifying run, they stuck it, stuck it up on the bank, as tends to happen your first time in a boat. But uh, to get into the top eight, you've just got to be really happy with that with your first outing. Uh, there is no doubt about that. And it's just fantastic to see newcomers to the sports just really getting involved, absolutely loving it. And uh, across the right there, uh, the line there for Greg Reardon with a 56.489. Well, they've come down again, KB, 56.489. So, uh, gee, a second and a half. So um, they'll be really happy. And, and, you know, by the time we get to Wanganui, that team there is going to be in the top five. Absolutely, I think they've really got the package and uh, they will certainly start rattling those, uh, the people at the top end of the tree. Sonic Boom now, Murray Jennick coming out on track. Yep, Paul Kuhn, uh, in there as well. And uh, that uh, L98 engine's gonna push those 525, put those 525 horsepower to use out there. And uh, this is another team that uh, had a time of 55.55 to find themselves seventh fastest qualifiers. Uh, doing a, another team doing a fantastic job out there in the water. This is the introduction class. And look, these guys went out so slowly. I thought that they were going to use one of those sticks to find their way around the track at the start of the uh, day, but really have come on very well. And uh, great to see that these guys are pulling it together and making it into the top eight. Of course, oh. We've got a bit of a flame out on them there. Flame out. Yeah, uh, they've had a motor issue. Yep, that will be the end of their day, I would imagine. Would so. you please put your hands together as a consolation round of applause, please, for uh, that boat out there, the Sonic Boom. It's a shame they were going really well, but they've uh, lost the power in the engine there. And, um, yep, DNF it is. Our next uh, boat in here in the Group B, the Biolytics Group B, is going to be Donna Thompson, Monica Cooper, and two abreast. They had a time of 55 seconds exactly, 55 seconds exactly earlier on. We'll get the sonic boom out of the water and uh, get them rescued, and uh, we'll be underway with the next, uh, next crew in. Yeah, really hotting up at the end of the day, isn't it, mate? It uh, gives us a, another opportunity to thank all of the sponsors of course, uh, Suzuki, all Therm Window Systems, Biolytics, PSP Jet Spreading Championship, uh, NZ, Valley Toyota, Enviroline, and uh, there is just so many sponsors that are involved in making an event like this happen. And uh, for the uh, Auckland Jet Sprint Club, the uh, direct mechanical diesel generators, ideal electrical supplies, NZ, Enviroline, Mike O. Wakefield, Ames Electrical and Drainage Systems. So uh, we'll, we'll get Donna Thompson and Monica Cooper underway right now. All right, they have the 406 uh, cubic inch Chevy with 500 horsepower at their disposal. AMF boats, Nick Candish, panel bedding, petroleum logistics, the concrete company, TCL Communications, River Speed and Spears are the ones that are pushing them around the country as they push the water out of the jet boat and out the back of the jet unit to get themselves around this Mary Mary Sprint Bowl. Just a little bit of a wild uh, topside there, KB. Yeah, look, uh, they just really haven't nailed that part of the track. They're losing a lot of time up there each and every round and uh, not too sure what's going on there. A uh, little bit of an oversteer coming out of the flip-flops heading across the mouth fresh there. So the Donna Thompson, while going okay, just a couple of little hiccups that are all in the same spot each and every time. Yeah, KB, I think that boat's sitting too deep in the water at the back, like it's up high in the front compared to some of those ones like Ross Travis and the likes, and it just looks like it's um, driving a little bit more like it's on a knife edge and, uh, and they're losing that uh, that hold on the water that they need. See how it's a little bit higher in the front end than some of these other ones? I'm not sure what you think, but that's how I see it. Yeah, look, I wouldn't be surprised at all, but uh, they seem to be reasonably happy with it. As Donna Thompson there gets across the line with 53.345, they haven't done... 
uh, from my view, a whole lot of adjustment to the boat. Maybe she's handle, uh, happy with the handling yep. characteristics of it and uh, quite comfortable just to get some wheel time here uh, for the new season and just keep progressing slowly as opposed to making some big and uh, and often dramatic changes to the handling characteristics. So maybe that's what it's all about. Two and three quarter seconds is what they've taken off the time that they got themselves here. So that might uh, get them into the top five. Actually, that's a good improvement. Pip Thompson and uh, Megan Brody Poppy will be our next uh, boat on the pitcher's box. 406 uh, cubic inch Chevy once again, the Stinger hole. And uh, the eight and a quarter inch hole. Now this, uh, this boat here has been very impressive. And their time from uh, earlier rounds was 53.5. Five. Really starting to move along beautifully as the day is going on. Very wide coming out of the biolytic sweeper there. Really had to change the angle of the boat to get through the flip-flops going through Suzuki the first time. How has she gone around there? Very nicely around Suzuki. And you would uh, very much suggest that these girls have really um, come to terms with how this is developing throughout the day. And I wouldn't be surprised if they're just been sneaking up on it ever so gently. Probably the best transition we've seen through that part of the track for them throughout the day. So I think we're going to see a very good time here from Pippa and Poppy. All right, the time is 53.800, 53.800. That finds them just behind Donna Thompson. So 53.80. And just slightly outside the time that they did to qualify into this round. So hopefully they haven't uh, spent all their pennies as we go now to Schizo. Patrick and Jay Hayden, and uh, they had a time earlier on of 53.27, 53.27. And uh, once again, this is uh, another 406 Chevy with uh, 502 horsepower. They've got an eight and a quarter inch uh, jet unit again, Stinger Hole. They've got more sponsors than you can get. Poke a stick out these guys, so keep an eye on the boat as it flies past and see if you can pick one up off it. Yeah, I tell you what, uh, some of these guys do such a good job with their professional approach towards the sport managing to pull sponsors in left, right and centre. And these guys, Patrick Hayden, really looking fantastic at the moment. Jay not getting too overly excited in the navigator seat, feeling quite comfortable and confident in her husband's driving ability. And uh, as they come down into the middle part of the track, you can see Jay there, but big, you've got to make sure you go around the hairpin, and Patrick has done exactly that. Now in the NZ part of the track, to the far side, this is the all important flip flops. Now I know this crew here would like to find themselves under 53. 53 27 is where they found themselves getting into this round. And it would be nice to be up above everybody else. Oh, how about that? 50.653. 50.653. I didn't think that yeah. was that quick, but uh, they just took they just took two and a half seconds clean out of the uh, equation for them. 50.653. Five, three. That is a massive improvement. That would it? that would have put them in second place in the last round and just behind Ross Travis. So uh, the gauntlet's starting to tighten up a little bit on the leaders. Absolutely. Hayden Wilson now coming out onto track. Now these guys, uh, that Ross Travis has been some significant seconds in front. These guys really starting to wind it back down on Ross Travis. Uh, Hayden Wilson, something oh. wrong off the start line. A uh, bit of flipper action there, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> up, out, he got his hand up and uh, our starter Mel just pointing out that he will get an opportunity to come back and restart. Yeah, just, just a little bit of a bump, just upset the equation a little bit, but um, Hayden Wilson had the time of 53.24, 53.24 earlier on. This, uh, this little white point stinger hull is uh, pushed along by a 410 Chevy, 400 horsepower. And uh, their sponsors, Engine Rebuilders, JB Contracting, Creative Aluminium, and Woody's Engineering. So uh, nice to have a good sponsorship. Now, this is a good boat to watch. This uh, this will be one of the ones that will be looking hard to be in the top three. Just going back on the trailer, are they? Yeah, yeah absolutely. They yeah, get back up there. There might have been uh, something wrong with the intake, a bit of blockage there. So they get that opportunity for a restart. Can't see anybody getting under the boat and uh, delving in there. Just having a chat to the driver at the moment is the crew. Just finding out what's going on. So uh, it looks as though Tim and Debbie Edhouse in liquid addiction have now been pushed off the trailer. So Hayden Wilson, uh, they're about to pull the boat up off the ramp and uh, have a little bit of a look underneath it to see what the problem was there off that start line. But it is now Tim Edhouse, Debbie Edhouse, the missus, sitting right in along beside him. 
They've got the L98 motor, the six liters in there. It's 500 horsepower coming out. And uh, pushing once again a stinger hole with an eight and a quarter inch jet unit. Hofonga Motors are their main sponsors. They it is the company they know own. Tire Max New Zealand Waikato Clutch and Brake Specialist has uh, helped them get here today. But they are going to get themselves out and around and try and compete with Ross Travis. They were two seconds behind him earlier on, but um, it's been a big improvement over the winter for these two. Oh, absolutely. Have a look at the way that they are just driving at the moment. Just as this day's wearing on. Just looking so smooth through that section of the track, just finding the line that's going to get through them, uh, get them through their quickest, and they're really starting to march up on it. I don't think Ross Travis is going to have it all his own way by two seconds at the end of the day. Uh, definitely not, and uh, by the end of the season, I don't think it's going to be uh, a done deal by any amount. Um, these guys are uh, looking at new packages, new boats, and uh, a lot of new improvements, and uh, just starting to find just where those improvements are shortening up their time. Let's go to Tim Edhouse's time as he comes across the line. Great uh, great drive by Tim. And Debbie there navigating as well. 50.653. 50.6. Oh, oh, sorry, I've got that wrong. 52.822. 52.822. So uh, that's brought them down a little bit, but not enough. Yeah, 2.2 seconds shy of the time yep. that Patrick Hayden set in the skitto. Ross Travers, NZ number one in the Group B. He has a posted a previous time of uh, 50.06. Where is he going to go with this one? Will he go sub 50? I think we've got a 49 coming up. Just keep an eye on it. Uh, it's an incredible drive. This guy, he's had this boat going for a season now. He's really starting to gel with it. And uh, him and his young son, like I said to you before, it's a real symbiotic relationship. These two, they just bounce off each other and uh, help each other oh, no end. Have a look at that line through there. He is just straight line, one of the most difficult parts yep. of the course. Good driving. Absolutely on top of his game. Set it up beautifully for that right-hander. This is going to be an absolute cracking time. He's some 3.5 seconds quicker at the split. No kidding. So here comes, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the final stages. I beat them to be a 50, uh, better than a 50, and uh, I think we're going to come into it. Ross and Shane Travis, Wanganui competitors, 49.932, 49.932. Couldn't have got any closer, but uh, he uh, certainly uh, didn't make a liar of me. That's incredible. Well done. That they, is uh, a uh, very good run. I might need to correct it. Gee, I'll tell you what, Tim Edhouse and Hayden Wilson, Patrick Hayden, and those guys are really going to have to uh, jump on it. Although, look, Patrick Hayden's the one that he's closest at the moment, only 0.75 seconds away from the time that Ross Travis just set. So at the moment, you would have to suggest it's between those two. But we still do have Hayden Wilson in white noise to come out and have another crack after he had a little bit of an issue uh, off the start line. So that boat now back up in uh, in the pit area being worked on. We, so we might have to come back to it, I guess. Yeah, we may have to come back. And we've got some of the 400s now coming down into the water, the Group A's, of course. So we can see uh, Cy Gibbon. He's uh, just come down onto the water. Rick Burke 